You're watching On Demand. Please check the closing time before trying to vote or enter any competition or other interactivity in this programme, as it may not count and you may still be charged. Today on your Loose Women Live... It's Christine Lampard, Jane Moore, Linda Robson, and Denise Welsh. Professional sachet, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Hello, welcome to your final Loose Women of the Week coming up. She's reliving one of the most shocking moments in TV history. Actress Charlie Webb talks swapping the Dales for the stage as she takes on an iconic scandal in her new play. Also, from a gracious grumble to a venomous vent, what sort of complainer are you? Find out why Jane's restaurant complaint ended with her getting a <laughs> phone call from the police. <laughs> And over 30 million listeners have tuned in to hear some extremely cringeworthy confessions on their podcast, and the majority would leave even Linda blushing. Really? Apparently, yes. It takes a lot. I know. Jordan North and William Hansen will be with us a little later. And if you have a mortifying moment of your own that you dare to share with us on the show today, please get in touch, send them in. The more embarrassing, the better, basically. Whatever it is, we can safely say that Linda and Denise have probably done worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, before that, um, scientists in Germany have said that first-time parents who are struggling with their relationship should consider having another baby in order to help revive their romance. They find that fathers see a drop in happiness levels after the first baby, but this increases after the arrival of a second child. It's interesting, this niece, because it's about the father, weirdly. Oh, it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any chance of getting perhaps the German scientist who came up with this on the phone? Because I'd like a little chat with him. <laughs> and what would you put to them, Denise? What an absolutely ridiculous thing to say. I think that it's common knowledge, really, if knowledge is the right word, that if you are having struggles in a relationship, that having a Band-Aid baby is the worst thing that can happen. It's completely underestimating the, um, the mental health... Well, you know, as somebody who suffered from severe postnatal depression, which I've talked about for 34 years and which actually stopped me having another baby for, for, for 12 years, it's a ridiculous thing um, to, to say. If you are having problems, the stresses of having another baby are just, in most circumstances, going to compound it. I don't even know why they would why they would do such a survey. To me, it's another stick to beat women with. It's like, oh, you're not making your partner happy. Have another baby to make him happy. It's utterly ri ridiculous. And also, when I, when I had Matty and I was very poorly, I was too scared to have another one. And my, my then husband, Tim, um, didn't want me to because he said, I don't want to lose my wife again. And when eventually, through a little mistake in Amsterdam, um, <laughs> Uh, Louis um, came along, which, of course, we're all thrilled about, and we told Matthew he burst into tears because he wanted an orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it took him a while to warm to the idea, you know, yeah. and then... So, but, um, so I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, that's... Yes. The, having read... Yes, it, yes thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having read a bit of the study, like I say, it's very much how, how the, the, the dad feels, how he becomes happier after the second, without a, any sort of question of how the mother might feel yeah. or the first sibling, yeah. like you just explained. I never thought about it from yeah. that perspective, actually. Maybe they don't want another no. one. It's always a very they happy come, only but... child. Yeah. Often they, they struggle with a second one coming along. Yeah. But Obviously, it, they're very close now, of course. Is it science or is it just logic? If you think about it, when you have your first baby, it's like a massive hand grenade gets thrown into the middle of your life. You know, you've been used to just popping out. Yeah. 
whatever, suddenly you've got to take changing bags and buggies and the baby, obviously, as well, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> when you remember And you get no sleep. And Friends you get no... have forgotten their baby in those you early no, days. You get no time together, etc., etc., etc. By the time you get to the second baby, and also I think a lot of men feel displaced when the baby arrives, first of all, yeah, because they lose... Men, men struggle with yeah. postnatal pressures. They lose their, pressures, their yeah. other half a little bit, um, because she's learning as well. And then by the time you get to the second one, You've both kind of, you're used to, you know, it's just train on the track. So it's complete logic yeah. that both of you actually feel a bit easier, I think, because mm -hmm. you know what you're doing by yeah. the second one. Well, it's I, not exactly science, is it? I had Lauren for nine years on her own with my first partner. And then when I met my second partner, my husband now, um, he wanted babies and whatever. I was working quite a lot. And I thought, yeah, we're going to try again for a baby. And then when I had a little boy. And then Lauren got the right amp. <laughs> so she'd had yeah. nine years of me on her own. Centre of attention. And she was centre of yeah. attention. She was sleeping in the bed with me and everything. And then all of a sudden, this little one comes along and takes over her place. And so I think for about the first five years, she really didn't like him. <laughs> so we were in Australia. I was doing a play out there. And she took him to a fun fair one night. And there was this guillotine thing and she beheaded him. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what's the matter with Lewis? She went, I said, he's traumatised. So she went, I beheaded him. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a terrible state. Anyway, after that... They Uninjured, did... we might have yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't yes. a real guillotine, but it was, like, blue and it made a noise and everything, and he really thought his head was going to roll into the basket down there. <laughs> but since then, they have made it up. <laughs> she does like him now. It took a long time, but, but she does like him. Time. But that's, there's yeah. lots of issues, isn't there? And it's like you said, I thought I was never going to leave the house after my first one. I literally stood at the front door with all of the bits and thought, I am never leaving the house again. She's going to be about 17, 18, yeah. and I venture out again. Was Frank happier when you had a second child? Um, yeah. I, oh, no. We, like, and I think as well because... And then it was a little boy, which is totally different to everything else that had been in the house with all the girls. So that there was a lovely novelty yeah. and all the rest of it. Um, but, yeah, there's definitely... I think you're, you hit it for me, Jim, where the second one, you're, you're kind of geared up for it. Yeah. I still had nappies the in the house. Stuff. I still yeah. had the bottles and the, the, you know, you know, the machine to clean them. All that stuff was still there. So, and I kind of knew what to do, but first time around, yeah. I didn't have a clue. Talk yeah. about learning on the job. So, yeah, you have to deal with yourself before maybe stressing yeah. about yeah. <laughs> trying to make the partner happy. you just got to find your way, don't you? Anyway, there we go. We've rebu there we go. rebuked that entire German <laughs> science <laughs> day thing. Well, a lot of nonsense, according to us. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, comedian Catherine Ryan, this is so interesting. She's revealed <coughs> that her family <coughs> actually hired a private detective to investigate her partner, Bobby, at the start of their relationship. Their reason? They thought he was too good-looking for her. <gasps> her dad even said to her, Catherine, he's either a gold digger or blind in one eye. This is oh, my God! These are terrible This is Catherine has said this now. She's gorgeous. Of course she is. They are, exactly. they are, they are, a, they are a family of jokesters, though, aren't yeah, they, as well? Of course, and let's, let's... Well, she's on the show on Monday, and she can put this completely right <laughs> okay, herself. Cool. But she did say this in an interview recently. Um, let me... Can you just be too good-looking, Jean? I'm coming to you, cos you're clearly fabulous. Are you, <laughs> are you, do you just struggle with being so good-looking? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, no, I mean, good-looking... Men, it's a funny thing, isn't it? Because when I was younger, you know, you, you, you do spot a good-looking person and you kind of like the idea of being with a good-looking person. But quite often, when... And this is obviously not, not the... across the board. I've just noticed your sniffy thing is over there. Oh, yeah, OK, I'll come <laughs> yeah, in a minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> across, it's not... Look, it's, a, it's a sweeping generalisation, but very, very, very good-looking people that you approach and talk to quite often their attractiveness diminishes because they're quite boring. Yeah. <laughs> because they've never had to develop a personality to, to attract try. people. I've managed it, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how many... <laughs> Comedians will go, oh, yeah, I was bullied at school because I was, like, the fat kid or the one that nobody wanted to talk to, so I developed this the, kind of humour yeah. as, a, as a sort of a shield. And good-looking good people don't have to develop that. Good-looking mm. people, you are attracted to them. They were apparently... You like well, looking at them. Yeah, whether or not it was this same scientist, but there was scientific research at one point, is that even people like teachers, there is a natural gravitating towards the more attractive pupils, even despite themselves. I think you're right about certain um, people that I've met that you see somebody who's absolutely 
drop dead gorgeous and you think, oh my God, oh my God. And within 10 minutes, you think, I wouldn't touch him with yours because they're so <laughs> boring. So boring yeah. Also, my, an ex of mine, which is probably, you know, people will say, oh my God, that's terrible, but I think it's very funny. He once said, you get a better time with an ugly bird because they try harder. <laughs> Sort of a more vulgar way of saying what we're of saying what we're what we're saying, but I would be horrified if my family, if I got a good-looking boyfriend and my family had got a private investigator. Yeah. Think, why is he with her? It's yeah, exactly. And if one of your kids comes home with a very good-looking other half, I think as a parent it would make you think, and and also because you know that other people will throw themselves at them because yeah. they're good-looking. So that kind of makes it it's very a hard bit more well. jeopardy. When yeah. your son comes back with, you know, Matthew's obviously in a band and he attracts lots of women and, you know, you meet some of them and they are literally the most beautiful things you've ever seen in your life and you try to be nice but you're going... <laughs> 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 Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but is she funny? <laughs> 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 have a personality. <laughs> so, but then, if it, if it were my children, I I would I would think they are so incredible that no one's good enough. I'd never you think wait. the flip side. Yeah. You wait. <laughs> it's oh, hard. No. Yeah. I, oh no. I'd, oh, that would stress me out actually. But no, I think as like I say, Catherine's here on Monday, so it'll be interesting to get her proper take on that. Um, still to come, former Emmerdale actress Charlie Webb joins us to talk swapping soaps for the stage as she recreates one of TV's most iconic moments. That's right after this. <laughs> Our award-winning show is hitting the road as we swap the studio for the stage and bring our panel directly to you. Oh, more drama than Blooming Love Island, this, isn't it? We'll be live across 16 spectacular nights this September in theatres across the UK. Join the Loose Woman for a night full of laughter. You need to stand in front of the mirror. Oh, no! Naked, <laughs> right. Hot topics. We'll move on to snipping bushes now then, oh, shall we? Fun and surprises. Who knows what he can do with those tentacles? <laughs> As we share our secrets and stories live and in person, you won't want to miss it. To join in the fun of the Loose Women Tour, go to the website. Welcome back. It is an especially exciting day today because we are officially kicking off that Loose Women Tour tonight. Yeah! In just a few hours, Kay, Nadia, Judy and Jane will be taken to the stage in Birmingham. <laughs> How are you feeling? Birmingham. Birmingham, I can't uh, do that next. I'm really excited, actually. I, I trained as a journalist in Birmingham, so I know it really well. The Brummies are great. I'm coming for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So straight off here, out the back. Thanks for the train Are you feeling strike. a bit nervous, though? Because we're used to doing it on the telly, but not in a big theatre. I am a little bit nervous, but I'm with, you know, we're all mates, yeah. we're great mates, we're in it together, it'll, yeah. be, it'll be such a laugh. And I'm coming and to set... watch and heckle. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've seen the set, it looks amazing. Yeah. OK, so. it is, we are all looking forward to it. Um, the tour's running all month, and if you fancy joining us for some late-night laughs, dramatic debates and behind-the-scenes secrets, of which there are many, all of the information you need is on the website now. Uh, competition time and your family could be setting sail on a Disney cruise. Lines close in just a few hours. Kate Lawler has all the details. Woo! Yes, I am here on board the Disney Dream, lapping up the sunshine on deck 12. I'm here with little Noah, my daughter, who's very excited because we're about to meet Donald Duck and Goofy, aren't we? But where are they? Yeah! Oh, there they are! Hi, guys! <laughs> OK, my life is made. Donald Duck and Goofy, we're here. Can I have a hug, please? Because I've always wanted to meet you. I feel absolutely honoured. I know how busy you are. Donald, pleasure to meet you. I'm going to let these guys have a little moment. Give them a hug, give them a high five, Noah. Right, let me tell you about this prize that could be yours. £35,000 in tax, free cash and a family holiday for up to five people. That's you and four others on board the Disney Dream, this very ship, next August, for a four-night cruise around Europe. We're throwing in $2,500 as well to spend on board, things like the gift shop and the spa. It really is a magical holiday that you don't want to miss.
miss out on. Honestly, we still haven't discovered everything on board. We've been here a few days. It's been brilliant. So you've got till 3 o'clock today to win the holiday and the cash. Here are all the details of how you enter. I'm getting involved. Come on, group hug. For another chance to win, text WIN to 86060. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Go to the website. Entries cost £2. Call 09068 786060. Calls cost £2 plus your network access charge. Or post your name and phone number to DY33, PO Box 7558, Derby DE10NQ. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close today at 3pm. Good luck. Good luck with that. Now, um, our first guest today caused chaos in the deals as Debbie Dingle for nearly 20 years before she waved goodbye to the soap in 2021. Now, Charlie Webb is making her stage debut in the play Quiz, based on the infamous 2001 Who Wants to Be a Millionaire coughing scandal. <coughs> <coughs> Here to tell us more, Charlie Webb! <laughs> So Thanks. good to see. I, I said stage debut there, and I assumed you must have done a big production like this before. And in fact, this is this is it. This is the first yeah. big, big one. I've been on stage since I was a kid, wow. and I've really thrown myself into the deep end with this one. That's for sure. And how do you feel? You're really nervous. Um, yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, I feel okay at the moment. I think as it gets closer, we're opening three weeks. Yeah, yes. Saturday or yeah. And you're playing September Diana Ingram. Yeah, I am. That's the woman who. That's the wife. The wife. That's oh, the wife who yeah. was the coffer. Well, she, she did cough. She but... did cough. Mm. No, the led... guy that, it was a guy in an audience, wasn't yeah, it? Uh -huh. It was the co-conspirator. Yeah, but there was a moment where she does cough yeah. on, on an answer, so who knows, who knows? But, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because there's new evidence. I'm not sure about the whole coughing thing. Oh, you're Are not? You not? I don't know, I'm not. They better change the play then, no? Well, I, I well, listen, <laughs> do you know what? The amazing thing about it is, is that... It's played in two halves and the audience gets a vote at the end of the first half and the end of the second half. So it's really interactive. I'm like, I don't actually want to go and do the show. I want to I just want to watch it. I want to watch I it. I really want to watch it. And a great it. cast. It's you, it's Rory Bremner. Yeah. Playing um, Chris Tarrant. Yeah. Mark Benton. Mark Benton, yeah. Is in it. It's fantastic. Yeah, isn't it? it's an amazing cast. And it's Sean Lennon and Daniel Edwards that are directing. It's written by James Graham. I mean, it's like just the, the most amazing team. And where are you so going? Lucky. So we open in Chichester Festival Theatre. It's lovely okay. there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Um, so we're there for a few weeks uh, rehearsing and teching and then we open and then we're going to Manchester, we go to Bromley, Canterbury, Bath, like all amazing theatres, so... Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be a good one because they've always maintained their innocence. So, like you say, it's interesting how you maybe still together. Yeah, that's yeah. what I find really interesting about it, is they are still together. Do you know yeah. I went to a boot sale? I love boot sales, mm. and he was at a boot sale. Oh, because oh. he does well, like he, he has he does like he sells. What like, he and, spent all his million? No, no, but he sells like antiquities. That was always their thing, oh, and they right. go. But they didn't on... get the million. Oh, no, they didn't get, get the million. million. Of course they no. didn't. No. Well, they did for five minutes. For five so they're, minutes. They're, they're, yeah. they're like, yeah. sure. <laughs> they did, they did. What's it like being away from home, Charlie? I suppose it's the first time in a long time you've had to do a big stint away. Yeah, it's the first time I've worked away from home, yeah. So um, I've been staying with one of my friends quite a lot. She's been saving me. Uh, but, yeah, it's just easier to block it out, you know? Like, I've got to be away, I've got to rehearse, I've got to keep my head in, in what I'm doing. So A starts school next week, so I'm going to go home for that. Um, and then straight back to rehearsals, so... Get back yeah. into it. Yeah. Um, really interesting how you have said you felt you manifested this next phase of your life, because you were, at least, say, 20 years in Emmerdale, huge portion of your life, very much... You're so synonymous with the show as a fan, like, I still think of you being there, really. But you thought, right, I have to change things, you wanted new things, yeah. and it was manifestation that you felt brought it to you. Yeah, so uh, Roxy and Afusi's book um, was amazing, and I know Roxy and I read a book, and I just completely changed my life and I just thought I want to do something new um, and I'd want you know I read the book after that but I decided I wanted to do new things you know what it's like that like you want to try different things and, and sometimes it's hard after a long soap stint it can be really hard and I was really lucky because I worked really quickly and um, so I feel like you know I was so lucky in that sense but ma yeah manifesting is just amazing like if you don't do it look into it because it is brilliant and you Rock manifested really up the long shadow which sounds Amazing. Yeah. Tell us about that. So Long Shadows out in September on ITV. It's directed by Lewis Arnold, who's just amazing. And it's it's re they've done it so sensitively. It's it's been done so brilliantly. Um, you know, it's 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 about the women and, and their families and they've just done it so so well. It's about, about to do something. with it is, yeah. 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 
But that's not what the focus is. You know, that's it, he isn't it's in it. It's about the much. lives it's, he affected. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's about the families and, and, and the victims. Really, and what do you so. play in it? I play a policewoman. Oh dear. Yeah. In a, in a hideous outfit from the 70s. <laughs> oh, it's oh, very glamorous. Toby, Toby Jones, Jones isn't it? Toby yeah. Jones, oh, I right. mean, it's like, you know, getting to work with Toby Jones. It's yeah. like, oh, it's just the mo the dream cast. David Morrissey, it's just brilliant. It's Amazing. such a brilliant cast, yeah. You've been very vocal about online trolling, haven't mm. you? Um, and that we should really take it more seriously because it's affecting so many so many people. oh massively i mean i don't understand why we don't i tend to not really respond to people because actually when they say these things they just want a response so i just think oh i'm ignoring you but i think that you know it gets to a point where i feel lucky that i don't i've got quite a thick skin but not everyone has mm. and i worry for children i worry for people i just worry for everyone i just think who sits and there's an the increase computer? in women tearing other women down on social media actually as well, if you a lot think of that. that had social media been around when you joined because you were what 14 yeah that yeah, would have been very yeah, difficult it would have been a whole different story yeah. like, i don't know if i could have done it actually like it's it, you know the world is so different now when i joined it was just about being an actor and you know doing doing whatever you love but <laughs> oh my gosh i look so young um but now it's like a whole different thing it's 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 and camera phones you know everywhere you go like people just like take pictures of you and you're like like, no one even asks anymore. No. Yeah. I mean, no. some people they do, of them. course. Yeah, they do, yeah. and I just think it's like... Imagine if I just was, like, walking down the street and just think, oh, I'll just take a picture of you, I'd probably be arrested. No, I know. You know I mean, but... when I was in Corrie, it was just... We had we had a load of pigeonholes, and people just wrote to you, and you just stuffed everything in your pigeonhole. The thought of going through an experience like that, being so exposed, dealing with what young people deal with mm. now, the compare and despair world is just horrendous. It changes yeah, the landscape a lot, doesn't it? Um, Charlie, honestly, it's it's going to be great. Everyone, like we say, we're gripped by the whole story. Yeah, um, the I'm quiz. gripped. Nah, National tour <laughs> kicking off on the 22nd of September. Thank you very much, Charlie Thank Webb. You. Everybody. Yeah. We're putting our table manners to the test a little later. Um, but is it ever okay to turn up to a party late? And uh, they're experts when it comes to mortifying moments. Uh, Jordan North and William Hansen are here as we reveal some of your most awkward encounters as well. If you've got a story, get it into us as quick as you can. We can't wait to read them. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to your final Loose Women of the Week. Keeping you company this lunchtime alongside me, Christine Lampard. It's these lovely ladies, Linda Robson, Denise Welsh and Jane Moore. <laughs> so to come, we are getting a My Fair Lady style etiquette lesson a little bit later as we reveal the one thing you should never do at a dinner party. And speaking of lovely ladies, wouldn't it be lovely yes. if we won a national television yes, award? Yes, it would! Yes. Wouldn't that be magnificent? <laughs> if you love joining us for some lunchtime laughs, you can head to the NTA website to vote for your favourite show with the very fancy QR code on your screen right now. We've made it really easy for them, well, yeah, haven't we? That's yeah, what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you know it makes sense, girls. <laughs> uh, and boys, and everybody. And boys. Yes, absolutely. And everyone. Now, what would you do if you stumbled across your dad on a dating app? And would you kick your ex off your Netflix account? Of course you would. <laughs> well, these are just some of the hilarious dilemmas tackled by best friends Jordan North and William Hansen in their brilliant hit podcast, where they help their listeners navigate the awkward moments of everyday life. A quick one from me. My nan got picked up by a fisherman out at sea after she fell asleep on a lilo. And <laughs> and dri <laughs> drifted away from the shore during a family holiday. <laughs> she was topless. <laughs> and Jordan and William join us now. <laughs> Oh, very 
really do good not to podcast see you. at some sunshine no. resort. <laughs> no, we normally do it in the centre of London in a windowless studio. <laughs> OK. It's not always that That nice. was an awful day. Let's, let's no. confirm that. <laughs> uh, Jordan, now you have claimed, these are your words, to be an expert in all things common. Yes. <laughs> you me in. <laughs> William, however, I am assuming that title would make your blood run cold. Well, yeah, for, for if it were attached to me, yes. yes. No, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an etiquette coach. That's my normal day-to-day -day life. And then an extension of that now is doing this podcast where we, as you teased, talk about all sorts of uh, slightly more unusual... So how elements. have you managed to find this middle ground in the friendship then? Well, we met 12 years ago. I was uh, a tea boy at uh, Five Live, and William, even then, was claiming to be the UK's leading etiquette expert. <laughs> right. and we were both 21 years old. And I thought that he was, like, 40-odd and, <laughs> like, married to a librarian. <gasps> he was going to go home and have a little sherry. And then, over time, we've just become <laughs> friends. And we used to disagree a lot. Mm. But that's what it's all about. That's how the podcast started, cos it was like, look, we, we disagree on lots of things, like you ladies, I suppose, yep. politically as well and socially, but we are best friends and we do get on. So, yeah. William, how mm. did you become... An etiquette expert. Well, I'm just very uptight, Jane. And <laughs> <laughs> that sort of just naturally it, it found me. Uh, but no, I. From I, what I, age? Like five, six? Well, I was very uptight, yes, as, as a young child. When you but... looked 37. Exactly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, no, my, my granny gave me a book of etiquette when I was 12 for Christmas because I was quite a precocious child and she thought it would appeal. And then, sort of, when I was 16, my school in Bristol said, oh, we need someone to teach the young years how to set a table. Could you do it? And it was either that or play rugby. So <laughs> I knew what I was going to do, Denise, and uh, uh, it's been tablecloths ever since. I know, I, I know it's pronunciation rather than etiquette, but I noticed mm. that you say unusual yeah. rather than unusual. Which yes. is it? Well, in, in received pronunciation, it would be unusual, but oh. it is quite unusual to, to say, say that. To say unusual? Yes. Right, okay. Does but... it matter? Does good no. etiquette matter? Yes! <laughs> Eti good etiquette does, but how you pronounce things, cos apparently oh, yeah, I, always, no. I always say sat instead of sitting, mm. and he corrects me every day on it, and I'm like, it doesn't matter, life's too short, I'm but sat do you... down, not sitting. sitting. But do you think that good <laughs> etiquette... So do you think knowing how to lay a table matters? No. No. So he came to mine for a meal when I moved into my... Because we, we are actually best friends and we go to each other's houses all the time. And he came to mine for a dinner because tea. We say dinner now to live down here. <laughs> and I just threw all the knife and forks in the middle of the table. That's he what should I have seen, do. Yeah, he should have seen his face. What, just for the two of you? No, there was our friends there, mutual friends, where you go around to his, it's like being at Claridge's where oh he got God. married, funnily enough. <laughs> it's like, it's, you've got to work your way in. It's like being on the Titanic. So why really does that are. matter to you? Well, cos I think when you have friends over, you want to show them that you've made a bit of an effort, that you actually want them round, rather than sort of the Weatherspoons <laughs> hospitality. <laughs> okay. Thank you. He, he is a great host, I will say that. He, he is a great host. Yes. He, he makes chicken, he boils chicken in what's she called? It's a sous vide. It's, it's sous vide. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 she called it. It's sous vide. So he boils chicken in a bag. No, oh, it's right. not chicken in a bag. Do you buy it in the bag? No, you prepare it. He boils it. chicken. It looks like, looks like William, Jeffrey Dahmer or something in a bag. <laughs> Honestly. William. But he's a great host. <laughs> yes, Linda. William, can I just ask you a question? Say yes. if you're out in a restaurant with all your mates, yeah. right? and you're waiting for your food, yeah. and some of them haven't been served yet, can you start eating before the others have all got their food? No. So... Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I have to eat oh, mine. So Otherwise, it goes cold. OK, well, if it is cold, if it's, let's say, a first course, and yeah. everyone's first course is cold, you can definitely wait, because it's, it's already cold. However, I would say to your friends, if they are still waiting for theirs, they should say to everyone, please start, don't wait. Okay. Then it's all right. Then it's OK. OK. <laughs> But this is, as you talk about the podcast, that's exactly how this was born. And you have an endless supply of crazy stories from mm. people, really embarrassing things we, we heard and saw you laugh at just Jordan there. It, it just makes good content, doesn't it? It really does. And, and we say when the letters get sent in and the emails, we get a lot of letters, handwritten ones, that we don't know how we're going to top this. And every week, it's just they're getting more and more outrageous. There's many we can't talk about because it's daytime. Yeah. Mm. There's quite a lot of rude ones that my kids have played to me. Some very rude and ones. And is there? The last time you were on, you were 
teaching us about coronation etiquette. Yes. I feel you've drifted a little, William, <laughs> <laughs> with I, your rude content. I have. It's the yin and yang of my career. <laughs> One day I can be doing the podcast, and then the next day, yes, I'm doing how to, you know, get ready for a state banquet. Uh, so it's, it's nice to have that contrast. The spice yeah. of life. Of yeah, course it is. Shade. It's weird. So he, he'll go out and teach really rich, posh families how to not eat, always how to eat properly, and he'll go to, like, real big fancy banquets, and then we'll be doing the podcast and we'll have a letter about someone seeing the father-in-law's member slip out during yoga. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> and then we'll, we'll answer that letter and I'll go, what are you doing today? And he go, oh, I've got a lunch at the Ritz. And I'm like, it's two different worlds. It just, well, you recently went to Benidorm. Mm. I actually caught up with you just, just before you were going. Oh, is that where you, that was? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You used to go um, all the time as a, yeah. as a kid. You've never been, William. No. What did you make of Benidorm? <laughs> Well, you are very familiar with it, <laughs> of course. Um, it's well, it's so nice. <laughs> we had, was we nice. had lovely weather. Yeah. <laughs> we had lovely weather. He hated it. He hated it. Look, Did you hate it? He absolutely hated it. I mean, look, they made me. They made me ride a bull. Did you go? <laughs> Did you, did you have the delights of going to see Sticky Vicky at any point? Yes. <laughs> yes. We interviewed Sticky Vicky. Oh, my God, I do you know, know Sticky Vicky? We yeah. met her. She's a legend. She, she managed to squeeze us in, which I thought... <laughs> She's so busy. Not like that. Yeah. <laughs> She's a well-known performer in that oh area, just so that we, we just for those yes, that don't she, know. She would say it's a magic act. She, yes. yes. Instead of pulling things out of a hat, it's... Yeah, I, yeah. Think we, I think we know. Yes. I think we know. Um, oh. So many people getting in touch, telling us various embarrassing stories. I'll pepper them throughout the rest of the show. But um, uh, Sarah says our washing machine had broken down, and when the repairman came to look at it, he pulled out one of my thongs that had been wrapped around the pump. He held it up and declared, there's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> if that wasn't bad enough, my father-in-law was standing right next to me. Oh. <laughs> Years ago, I went into a card shop, says Kathleen, and asked a girl who worked there for the sympathy cards. She said, we have a special offer in 10 packs of cards if you want to bargain. And as Kathleen said, I don't really want to have to buy 10 sympathy <laughs> cards at any point. She was very embarrassed when she realised, but we did laugh and it cheered me up. Um, oh, loads to come. I will keep them I will keep them coming throughout the rest of the show. Thank you very much. Um, you're staying with us. Yeah. Mm. You're not going anywhere. We've enjoyed you so much. Oh, <laughs> Sit where you are because uh, coming up after the break, the ultimate lesson in ladylike behaviour. But will they be able to transform our own Eliza Doolittle, Ms Linda Robson, into a real-life Audrey Hepburn. Is it possible? <laughs> Let's just check good how luck. good William is. <laughs> we'll uh, check all of that out after the break. <laughs> Hello again. In just a moment, what is the correct way to eat spaghetti? We have got the ultimate manners test. We do. Uh, first, though, it's a bad uh, news day for people called David, as they have been named Britain's biggest complainers. <laughs> According to new research analysing one-star online reviews, the most negative people are called David, Paul and John. <laughs> apparently. I apologise, Andy. I know. It's a bit hurtful, but that's apparently is a fact. We've uh, been talking about what type of moaners we all are. And there is a type, isn't there, yeah. Jane? Psychology Today uh, have done a thing and they said three types, chronic complainers, so they're those people who are never satisfied and they go on and on about many problems. Venters, those who <laughs> express <laughs> emotional dissatisfaction. They're not looking to solve anything, they simply want validation. And instrumental complainers, which is all about solving problems. Ah, um, that's you. That's definitely you. Yes, yeah. I, I'm not a big complainer. I mean, if somebody does something and they, they just say, oh, I'm so sorry that happened, I'm absolutely fine with that. It's if they try and put the blame on me, then I might start looking at evidence as to why that is not the case. Yeah. And I, years ago, I was a restaurant reviewer and I had a couple of incidents where, um, first of all, I did... I used to review quite a lot and be quite nice, but if but they, they were... don't, they don't know who you are when no, you're No, 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 you go and haven't got a clue, you're just there as a punter. And um, the, one of the restaurants was rubbish. It was a seafood restaurant and it didn't have any seafood. <laughs> So I wrote that and they complained to the, the newspaper and said, 
Well, she arrived an hour and a half late for her table. She was drunk, whatever. <gasps> so I got the CCTV footage from the oh, building. Oh, yeah! yeah. They stoked the fire. Showed me arriving at five minutes before my table was due, straight as a die, walking along the pavement, not in the slightest bit drunk. But the second one, I went to a restaurant. The maitre d' was dreadful. I went back the second time. Rude, think, rude, dreadful. Really rude, ob really obnoxious with everybody. Everyone was like that. Uh, I went back a second time, just in case he was having a bad night. It was exactly the same, so I gave him a bucket load. I got a call from the police, and they said on the day the review appeared, he stole all of the credit cards of the people in the restaurant <laughs> and was last seen running bare-chested along the Thames. <laughs> <laughs> on his way to your office. <laughs> Probably. <gasps> I, I, don't think, I think he went back to... He was from Europe somewhere. I don't think wow. they ever found him. My wow. goodness. Is there a posh way to complain? <clears throat> and how should we complain, William? Is there a, a proper standard? Yes, there is. I think Brits, we're not generally brilliant at it. Yeah. Uh, but I think there's that classic scene in Faulty Towers where they're complaining and then Basil <laughs> comes over and they're, oh, it's lovely, thank you so much. <laughs> and I think we all do that. Yeah. But if you are going to do it, if we're out with a group of friends, for example, what the person the person who booked the table is the one that really should be doing the complaining and right. they should then remove themselves from the table and go and talk to the, the maitre d', the waiter, away from the table, because otherwise it's ganging up on the poor waiter who yeah. it may not have been actually their fault. Yeah. Uh, and so just sort of don't embarrass them in front of others and strip all emotion out of it, I would say, and just yeah. keep it as factual as possible. This happened, which meant this happened, and then this happened, rather than getting very het up about it. Okay. He's good, isn't he? He's it is very good. good. Yeah. It's very, very good. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's sometimes easier said than done, though, mm. isn't it, to take the... I think I've got, I've got worse as a venter. I tend to often vent to the wrong people who are totally disinterested in what my vent is about. <laughs> but I just have to vent it first. <laughs> and I think it's because service generally in this country has declined so badly mm. that you just... <laughs> the, the, the rudeness and the, and the lack of wanting to even serve you, and you've sat 20 minutes at a table with people making no eye contact with mm. you, and if you dare to just ask for their... They look at you as if you've done, as if you've done yep. that, so it's very hard to stay sort of un, unemotional <laughs> She's about venting. Get it off your chest. Get it off my chest. There you go, she's yeah. happy or not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, competition time now, um, and it's your last chance to win our two-part prize before lines close at 3pm today. Uh, Kate has all the details. Now, before I tell you about our fantastic competition, let me show you around here. This is the Oceaneer Club on board the Disney Dream. This place has everything from Andy's playroom in Toy Story to Han Solo's cockpit in Star Wars, Millennium Falcon. OMG, how awesome is this? I'm in Star Wars heaven! With our two-part prize package, you and your family could be enjoying all that the Disney Dream has to offer, from the epic Oceaneers Club to the adult-only spa. Plus, we are throwing in a massive £35,000 in tax-free cash. So, if you fancy a little break yourself, you could win a four-night European cruise on board this very ship, setting sail from Southampton next August for you and your family, plus £35,000. Here's how you enter. For another chance to win, text WIN to 86060. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Go to the website. Entries cost £2. Call 09068 786060. Course costs £2 plus your network access charge. Or post your name and phone number to DY33, PO Box 7558, Derby DE10NQ. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close today at 3pm. Good luck. Oh, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be lovely? <laughs> Guess who that is. <laughs> Jordan and William are here uh, still. We're not letting you go today. Uh, William, you have got the perfect guest test for us today, yeah. don't you? Um, uh, I'll start with the spaghetti first, shall we, just because mm. it's right in front yeah. of us. Is there a correct way to eat it? Yes, there is. And in Italy, of course, where it's from, they have quite a few rules. And actually, the same for any pasta. Never cut it with a knife. Oh. No, I don't cut it with a knife. I'll get a glass like this. It's easier for the kids, then. To oh! Just... <laughs> <laughs> like that. And then they don't make a mess. Look. Oh, my... <laughs> Lovely. That is genius. Genius, isn't it? <laughs> That's amazing. What a nanny ninja's tooth. Look at the guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's 
absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Will it It's like being back in Benidorm again. <laughs> That's amazing. No, yeah. that's full of good tips. <laughs> I'll work that into my classes. Then. Thank you. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, no, that's not how we do it. How would you do it? <laughs> well, first of all, I wouldn't put the the pasta on top of the bolognese no. sauce. But mine would be. Ah, you do well. A spoon. To be honest, in front of you, I'd probably do that thing. But actually, sometimes I do you cut that it. because I'm a dribbler. I... So in it all sort of goes. She's dribbled today already. Yes, already <laughs> yeah, I have oh. dribbled. Yeah, today. Okay. Is it disgusting? Well, right. Well done, Jane. Because Jane is just using a fork and is just using the fork in your dominant hand, whether you're left or right handed, whichever one you want to do. Don't go into the middle mm -hmm. of the pasta. Just go to the edge, edge yes. and take a few strands and then pull the it up, no. and then you can do it again. Don't use the spoon to create a little neat parcel. Spaghetti, though, is a messy food. Never yeah. order it on a date or a job mm. interview over lunch. No. Mm -hmm. Order it it's when you're amongst friends. It's better on your own friends. in front of the telly when you can just shovel it in, isn't it? And it doesn't mm. matter. So I'm led to believe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then once you've got a, a neat little neat parcel, little in it goes. Off you pop, And yes. I won't eat it. No, I, I, exactly. <laughs> OK, you are eating it. Oh, he's got his braces in, he can't eat oh, it. Oh, right, well, don't worry, don't worry. You can do it Oh, William, you're horrified, aren't you? That's probably not a thing you would do on a date. Is it what children just Take your brace out. Yeah, take no, your brace out. I take out. it out in advance. Yes. 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 So, William, OK, we've, so we've, sorted the, we've sorted the food for the dinner party. Yes. What about you are a guest at a dinner party <laughs> and you bring wine? We would yeah. think that's a very nice thing to do, but yes. there's a way to do it in the right way. Yes, if you... If you know, oh, you just help yourself, Jordan. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> so, I'll carry the item. It's fine. <laughs> and, This is your bit. I don't Do you want to go this. home? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, if you know that Denise loves a particular Italian Pinot, then bring uh, Italian Pinot. But if you don't know if someone drinks or what wine they like, take something else like chocolate, a safer bet. OK. Rather but than should you drink. always turn up should be if someone's invited you to dinner? Yes, you yeah. should now. Or you can send it in advance. Mm. Okay. And actually, that's quite good, particularly if you're coming from work. Send them some flowers in advance. OK, oh, very good. good. We're going to be revealing more of our own mortifying moments as part of the Loose Women Tour. Definitely not suitable to be aired on daytime television. Uh, come join us if you can. Speaking of the tour, Jane, finish eating. You have oh, a God, tour to head to. Tonight! We're supposed to have given up croissants. Oh, <laughs> Jane, Jane, where are you? We thought you were coming with us. Exactly! <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, you had to sit on top of a bag, but girl, yeah, where are you? <laughs> yeah. Listen, the traffic is really bad and we are getting really nervous. So whatever you're doing, get off that stool. And and and, and come now. Now. Because we're on our way to Birmingham. Birmingham, are you ready? Yay! <laughs> Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. So Thank good you. to Thank have you, you both. Thank you for your company. We're sending all of our love to the ladies tonight. Um, if you're heading to Birmingham as part of the audience, have an absolute ball. Uh, we will be back next week. Jane McDonald, Bill Bailey and Strictly Johannes will be joining us. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah.